Welcome to the Intentional Encourager podcast, where each episode brings you compelling conversations and stories designed to entertain, enlighten, and encourage. And now here's your host, Brian Sexton. And welcome into the Intentional Encourager podcast. I'm your host, Brian Sexton. Thank you for joining us again today. I have a new setup, so I have to do this now. And um, so thank you to my, my dear friend who shall remain nameless for my new setup. But I have dear friends as well, too. So one of my dear friends, Tam Pluckros, is in Australia. Her sister, Tanya, is in Vegas, Las Vegas. And if you didn't notice... If you're watching on video, they are twins. And so I, it is my honor. We've been working on this for a while to welcome the Pluckrose twins to the Intentional Encourager podcast, Tam and Tanya. How are you ladies today? Good day from Australia. Fantastic. Thank you so much for that lovely warm welcome, Brian. And uh, a very warm welcome. Hello, I'm Tanya, and um, I'm doing exceptionally well. Thank you so much. And how are you, Brian? I don't have as good a hair going on right now as the two of you do. <laughs> I, I, I just, beautiful blonde hair. I just, I'm in awe. I'm just, you, you were, your parents did so well genetically with the two of you. So that, that was perfect. So let me, let me just start here with the two of you. Tanya, you're in the midst of a move. Mm -hmm. And you, you, you guys have had things differently in Australia as you've handled the pandemic here differently than we have here in the United States. So Tam, I'll start with you and then Tanya, I'll come to you as well. What has changed in your world since COVID-19 has hit and how have you dealt with it? Um, Australia, um, our government has handled it very well. They were very, um, I suppose, onto it very quickly with the restrictions and per se, I've got to say, our lives pretty well didn't change as much as the rest of the world. So with that in mind, we have been able to, with only a short period of time of our kids being homeschooled, um, we moved forward very quickly back into the normality of our life as best we could without the cafes and the restaurants and the hospitality. And of course, there's no travel. But Per se, our government has been very generous with supporting us with um, government support money every second week. So even if you lost your job, you still have a backup plan, unlike many other countries. Yeah. Um, and our government, I'm very proud of it. I, I foresee in the future amazing opportunities for Australia. I see a lot of travel to and from. I see a lot of people, because the strength of our government has been proven through such a pandemic, I see a lot of investment, people coming to go where there's strength, where I feel Australia has strength now. And particularly, I think we are going to have a mining boom uh, in relation to our resources because there's strength shown in our government already. So I'm really excited with what the future holds. I really sincerely am. Tanya, you and you and I have been here in the States and, and we're seeing a little bit different viewpoint because again, and you're in Las Vegas, which is the one of the entertainment capitals of the world. There's just incredible. What have you seen so far since you've moved there to Las Vegas? Because it's been a good while since I've been to Vegas and haven't had to, to get that perspective. What have you seen so far since you've been there? And you've come from LA as well. So you've seen a lot of different sides to the coin. Um, well, Brian, thank you for the question. I would love to uh, elaborate on your question about the differences between Los Angeles and Las Vegas, but alas, I can't because I only arrived here on a Saturday morning. Well, what are you seeing out there? Because again, oh, from a, okay. from a tourism, yeah. So is, is, what, okay, so what have I seen so far? Well, the pace, this is very different. Um, people are obviously carrying out the federal, the federal, the federal advisory, uh, health advisory, uh, uh, um, the federal advice, which is we all have to wear masks. Right. So yes, we're all carrying that out. Uh, I have to say the pace is very different here. There seems to be less fear. And I don't know what it is. Maybe it's just the atmosphere. 
but there's a different a different space and there seems to be a a feeling of more hope here because there's less people and i i do believe that when you have a large a larger group of people because i'm all into the mindset work and minds i believe that there's that the environment is less people which means there's less fear thoughts going on in the environment that affects the environment mm -hmm. there seems to be a more spiritual connection here um compared to in los angeles and and tanya let me let me elab go there for just a minute las vegas is a city that sells hope if you will because mm -hmm. when people come to las vegas the, the the first thing when you get when you come into McLaren Airport and you get off an airplane there, which you both know the airline industry very well, there are slot machines that greet you. There aren't slot machines when you fly into Charleston, West Virginia, where I live. Right. There are slot machines that greet you and say, "Welcome to Las Vegas," and in a weekend you can ha win a bunch of money or you can do things like that. I, I got to get your both of your perspectives from your background. I know that you have an, an airline background. If you don't mind me asking this, I would love to get your perspective on flying, whether it's a, a an international flight, a commercial flight, things like that. That has changed very dramatically as well, too, because passengers now are wearing face coverings. Flight attendants are wearing face coverings. Pilots are wearing face everyone's wearing a face covering on an airplane, it can already be a stressful situation anyway. And I've flown a bunch. You, you have parents with children that don't handle flights well. You have business travelers just trying to get from point A to point B in a rapid fashion. What do you see from this, from that, from that industry standpoint that is, that is going to change and become a new normal? Because I can see things coming out of this pandemic that are going to become new normals for all of us. Um, Brian, the way, first of all, in Australia, we do not have international flights departing per se with Australians going on holidays. We have uh, Australians coming back from countries to resume their normal residency because their jobs have... Um, now being terminated in foreign countries. So they are returning, but they go, because our government, um, our Prime Minister Scott Morrison has insisted they go straight into hotel quarantine for 14 days. They go straight into hotels, they quarantined. That, that I suppose that international side of travel has been taken care of for, for this moment in time. If you uh, quarantine a West Virginian in a hotel for 14 days, it's called an upgrade. Okay. It is a complete lifestyle change because it's like, wait a minute, this is nicer than the place that we normally live. <laughs> I, I I understand what you're saying. I do. So I'm we, sorry, but, Tam. I had to. I had yeah, to. I I I because I've never been to where you live, um, Brian. I I cannot consider have an yourself on fortunate, that. Tam. Consider but yourself I, fortunate. <laughs> I insist now on visiting because I love to explore and know more of other people and countries. Yes. It it is part of my DNA. I just love it. So, but our, our domestic travels only just resumed because, as you'd appreciate, we are by states and um, the 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 I suppose the governments in the individual states took it upon themselves to restrict travel between states, depending on the amount of outbreak. So that's just resumed now. And yes, you do have to wear masks. It's preferred, but it's not actually, um, you don't actually have to do it. Moving forward, how I see it, we don't have um, airlines, particularly the budget airlines coming in from countries um, such as Thailand and um, low-cost low budget airlines from Singapore and all that, those certain airlines have gone. Our Qantas, which both Tanya and I have had many years um, being part of, you know, I was there for... I used to love those commercials when I was a kid. The, the Koala, the, the Qantas Koala, you know, and, and I would he see the commercial and they would say, 
Qantas is now exploring the South Pacific, and it was the koala bear. That was so – I'm sorry, Tam. I just – you these things are said, and in my brain, it just pops into my brain, and it's like, oh, my gosh, I just, re- I just went back to my childhood. Oh, that's beautiful, Brian. Yeah. It's so a Qantas has, you know, it's put all its A380s at, as we speak in the California desert, just park them there for the moment in time. The runway um, is is just filled with our Qantas, the re- remaining fleet just scattered around it. But moving forward, because I am such an optimist and I am such an encourager, I honestly see our country is going to, absolutely explode with travel and we will i don't believe we'll have enough aircraft for the demand because all the people who've come home or all the people who haven't been able to leave will all want to go back to see their relatives yes and what have you so travel here i wouldn't say is is as affected as per se in america but then america are traveling more and, um, but I do feel deeply, deeply for my Qantas um, friends who have lost their jobs for the last, um, you know, almost 12 months and how the, that loss of their identity, it's absolutely their identity. They've had to reinvent themselves in these times, but our government has supported them and they will appreciate their jobs even more when it's up and running. And so with that in mind, um, it is still a, a, I feel, an exciting era in Qantas, a new, a new era, a new way of looking at life. And I think it can only get better. I think we will explode as, because we don't have Virgin International flights anymore, which was our major competitor internationally. So I honestly believe Qantas is going to do very well out of this moving forward. Yeah, Sir Richard Branson doesn't need any more money. Let let Virgin just, you know, <laughs> handle. Tanya, I've got to ask you this. You've been in the States for several years now and, and moved to the United States from Australia. Do you ever miss it? Do you ever miss going home and things like that? Because, it, you know, I love the what I love about the two of you, you're just so authentic. You're just so genuinely authentic. Are, are there times that you say, boy, I would love to be back in Australia and things like that? And how do you cope with that? How do you handle that? I think, so, um, yes, I do miss Australia. Um, I went home last year after five years. After five, This is my sixth year of living in America. So I went home and I was lucky enough to go home twice last year because I still get the travel benefits with Qantas. So I was very fortunate to go back twice and see my family. And yeah, I felt homesick um, leaving. It was hard to leave, to come back here. But you know, Brian, what keeps me here is I believe is this burning desire within me to make an impact in the world. And I've come to America to honor that calling. And when I, um, I believe that once you get clear with what you really, really want to do, like when you, when you, whatever's keeping you way up, awake at night right now if you haven't stepped into it I believe it's time because once you step into it it creates the desire that you will do whatever it takes to make it happen and I believe America is the greatest uh, country to support you to step into that greatness why because um, I believe there's a different a different operating system here in America compared to say Australia, because Australia is smaller, and there are there are many more systems that have been set up here uh, with possibly more millionaires or more not millionaires but people who have made an impact, mm-hmm. uh, thought leaders that have gone ahead and made an impact um, because of the because of the setup in America because if there's one thing America America has always had Americans have always had is that nothing is impossible you can do it just put your mind to it and you can do it so I think yes. living in this vibration of success has supported me to not be too homesick but to push forward with this calling um, this God-given calling within me to keep going so I hope that answers your question when it comes to the reasons why I have to put aside my emotional needs when it comes to being in Australia and, 
and make sure that I'm doing whatever I can to fulfill um, I guess I'd love to say God's calling inside of me. Oh, um, absolutely. Absolutely. And, and, and I don't know how you could not be homesick because again, you know, that that's a part of who we are, our family and our genetics and things like that. And, and, you know, I, I knock West Virginia and things like that. Those of us here in the States, West Virginia is one of the poorest States in the United States, but it's home. It's, it's home for my family and I, and, 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 and Tanya, I'll say this, when, when my son was looking to go to college, we wanted him to go away to school to North in North Carolina. And he's like, but you know what? I grew up here in West Virginia. I grew up in this area. I, I'm really not ready to leave it. And so I totally understand. I want to get into your story. That's why I wanted to have the two of you on the intentional encourager podcast to tell your story in the remaining time that we have. And this will be a little shorter episode because um, we have a limited amount of time. And so um, whoever wants to go, Tam, Tanya, uh, remind me who's older. I am. Tanya is older. Okay. Well, you the- start the story and then Tam, you can pick up and then, you know, I'll just sit back and drink whatever beverage I have here next to me and you, you can have the floor. What story would what what would what would the story ba- be based on? Is it me coming to America and why I came? I just want you guys to tell your story about you and and your relationship with each other and and you know because I I don't know what it's like being a twin. I you know I'm I'm not a twin. I you know there could you imagine two people looking like me running around <laughs> Earth? I mean, good grief! Awesome. You know. Hey everybody, Brian Sexton here. I want to tell you about our sponsor, SEO National. SEO stands for Search Engine Optimization. Now, what's that, you might say? Well, Search Engine Optimization helps you show up higher on search engines in front of paying customers for words that you, as a business owner, can monetize. What a great concept. SEO National is owned by my good buddy, Damon Burton, who's been a guest here on the Intentional Encourager podcast. Not only has Damon and his team worked with businesses of all sizes, from e-commerce startups to NBA teams and Shark Tank featured businesses, but more importantly, Damon and his team are about transparency, trust, and providing lifetime value. So much so that he still has his first customers after opening SEO National 14 years ago. Let me give you some intentional encouragement and call Damon and his team today at 855-736-6285 or go to www.seonational.com and get a free quote. Awesome. Could, couldn't oh, get better, Brian. We need two of you in the world. Oh, my. Three of you. Four my wife, you, my five, wife would, ve- my wife would vehemently disagree. She's like, no, nah, one of you is good. But no, what was it like growing up for you two as twins? Because, you know, you, you've got that such that incredible bond, I would think. And I've heard stories about, you know, twins just really having this incredible bond. So what was it like growing up for the two of you in Australia, just knowing that you had each other? could take it back Tam, to even growing up in south africa that's where originally grew up there you go even better even better see you should see what should happen is you two should interview me on the intentional encourager podcast because you're doing a much better job than i am (laughs) i think when we think back to growing up in south africa we um we grew up there and then moved to Hong Kong when we were 10 years old but what I can remember as twins was that we always had each other and if anything we were our best friend always our best friends looking out for each other and somehow we were we always had a lovely time growing up in South Africa because we had a playmate to play with every single day before during school and after right? Because we were often put in the same classes together. So we always had companionship of each other, which kind of was good in one way, but isolating in another because we were such good friends with each other that we tended to not attract and have close friends because we were each other's best friends. Would you not agree, Tab? 
Um, it was a it was a wonderful relationship. Um, our early years, um, we had a privileged lifestyle. There's no question. Um, we moved to Hong Kong, which to us was quite traumatic because we gave up that beautiful home with the tennis court and the swimming pool. But looking back now, moving to Hong Kong and then having, fortunately, my mom was our mom was half South African, half Australian. Our dad's British they were able, my dad had such foresight. We look back now and he wanted us out of South Africa because of all the problems. And so he also had foresight being an electrical engineer to keep moving forward the next step, the next step to, to still have that lifestyle and that, that way of living, but we just couldn't have it anymore in South Africa. So we ended up in Hong Kong, but then we ended up in Australia. And now we look back and we say, thank you. Thank you, God, for making that happen because we wouldn't be the people we are today. I honestly believe what we witnessed as children in South Africa against people, against the black population was horrific, horrific. I, mm -hmm. I have goosebumps even telling you. Uh, there was one incident, I remember we were only six years old and there would be a police van that would come at 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. and round up any black people on the street because it was a curfew. And they would just round them up, throw them in a van, and my and then your own your owners of those servants would have to go and bail those your your own people out of jail. And I remember wow. my mother just running after this van, just crying and saying, But that's my boy, get my boy, you can't take my boy, because we treated our servants or not even our servants they were our family billy and mary like they were our our family and i just remember this is just not right in this world and i think because of that upbringing we have become the people we are today where we that injustice of people because of a different color mm -hmm. has enabled us to look at life and say, why should people be discriminated against? Everyone should be given a, a go in this life. Everyone has the capability within themselves to become more. It's a matter of that desire. It's a matter of deciding you want to become something else. It's a matter of choosing different choices in your life. And every choice leads to a different point of view, a new awareness of more choices. And with more choices, of course, you've got God there supporting you into the next step of your greatness. I yes. honestly believe that because we wouldn't be the people we are today, not only flying for an airline, but here we are in a pandemic, but we have thrived in it because we've mm -hmm. become more in our strength of wanting to give value to people. God is tapping us on our shoulders every day saying, telling your story and do what it takes now to empower people. If you've grown up in that type of environment, empower them no matter where mm -hmm. you are today. My people, my darling, darling human beings, you have a why. And I beg you to find that why and serve in it. Because as a collective now, there's a new operating system of doing business, doing mm -hmm. relationships, doing love, doing everything. And we, we all need to connect deeply with each other. It's a new way after this COVID. I'm glad yeah. you mentioned that. I had a similar type upbringing. I grew up in a little town in Southeast Ohio that was settled by 37 slaves who escaped from a, a slave state in Virginia and settled in Ohio. And, and a couple of years ago, my family and I did this bus tour put on by the NAACP because it was important to my wife for us to, for my son to see, okay, here's where your dad grew up. And I was telling my son, as we went to different places, I said, yeah, here was a playground we played in when I was a kid, we would come by this house and what, what affected me and not, not to hijack your story, but what affected me was we go to the cemetery and it's, it's where the 30 set, they, they call it the 37 cemetery. It's where the original 37 who settled the town were buried. And an African-American classmate of mine um, who was at my 10-year class reunion was buried in that cemetery. He, unfortunately, was killed in a murder-suicide with him and his wife in a domestic violence dispute. And that moved me because he shouldn't have been there. You know, 
the, the, we honor those folks that settled and built the town that I grew up in. But what more affected me was seeing my classmates, walking by my classmates' grave and telling my son, I, I went to school with him. I, I knew him. He was a wonderful guy. And so, yeah, again, and I, and I tease people, Tam, and I say, the first time I heard rap music was on the back of the school bus in 1985 in, in the eighth grade, wow. you know, as we, as we were taking the school bus back home. But you're right. In this in this world that we live in now, it's so important that we treat people with respect and dignity and and just love one another as as children of God. God made us all equally. And so I, I love that. It's a beautiful story that you share. I want to know and I want to kind of fast forward a little bit and forgive me for doing so. This is atypical of the way we do the intentional encourager podcast but i definitely want you guys to to be impactful and have that time to impact folks i want you to take me individually or collectively through the biggest obstacle that you both have overcome and what was the lesson you learned from it okay um well mine was recent mine was recent and it was driving here from los angeles and I just getting out to... of Los Angeles in a vehicle could be a, 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 ch a large challenge in itself, Tanya. It, well, um, I have to say I have I've, um, I've never had to rely on God so much. Um, and and I, I look back now and I know it was for me and it was not against me. And I left on Saturday morning um, with my car packed and two cats, Sydney and Serafina who are Siamese cats and I put them in their soft carriers and I put them in the front of the seat so they could see me and be near me. And we started to drive and suddenly Serafina, who was next to me, started to poke her head out, out of the carrier. And I'm like, what the, get back in there, young lady, tried to put it back in, pulled over um, and put it back in and kept driving. Then she started to happen again put it back in and I put a pillow on top of the top of the case. And then Sydney started to act out. He was on the floor and he started to get out of his cage, breaking through the, the Velcro of the uh, cover. And then I would pull over again. And, um, and this time the shenanigans started to happen and they lasted for five hours, five hours. And I couldn't turn back. I was too far gone from LA to turn back. And I was too far uh, from uh, Las Vegas to, to go anywhere. I was stuck in the desert, Brian. And I just kept going. And there was no Petco. There was no PetSmart to pull over and get new carriers. I literally had to rely on God. I've never prayed so hard in all my life. I pulled over maybe five or six times um to get them back in their cases and there was one stage where Serafina got out of her cage and ended up on my lap and I swerved and went down an embankment and luckily could just get up and nearly had a an accident with the rinks that going backwards and forwards because Las Vegas is a, a state where they import and export everything and I've got to say I don't know how I did it I really don't I I mean I had my hand Sydney had eaten his way through the carrier and his head was poking through trying to get out. I had to put my hand inside the carrier and hold him down and drive like this. And I still had two hours to go. Hmm. Still keep going. Just keep going. And um, I just, I mean, the only thing that got me through was prayer. The thing that got me through was um, my mind. Said. I kept saying, God only gives me as much as I know he can, I can handle. If God be for me, who be against me? If God be for me, who go, be against me? Um, I have phenomenal coping skills. Um, I, I can accomplish great things with ease. And, you know, I got to the hotel and um, I just collapsed. Like I checked in and she said, the, the, the room's not ready. And I'm like, please. And I just, I collapsed and I rang my sister and I said, I don't even know how I got here, but I got here. And I, I know that that was meant to happen. I know it was. 
Mm -hmm. because it was a lesson. And then I asked Tam, what do you think it was? And she said, what did you say, Tam? Um, I just think God, you know, Brian, you asked a question, what obstacles? I, I honestly see what, what people would perceive as obstacles as actually opportunities. I see, you know, the... I honestly see God gives you opportunities to evolve and grow, become more, learn more about you every single day. And if you see it as an opportunity, I honestly feel you find the strength within you because you do have it. So mm -hmm. Tanya on that journey actually found more of Tanya that she'd forgotten about. And that actually was a breakthrough. So next time she has a breakdown in an obstacle or she perceives and perceives is a very important word, perceives she has an obstacle. She now has evidence in her soul of what she can get through with mm -hmm. should she go through another breakdown. And that's very important, I feel, for people to write down all these breakthroughs that come part of what you perceive as breakdowns right. because they are so important for you to revert back as evidence of the strength and that God is always supporting you. I, I honestly I love what, see that. I love what you said there. And, and Tanya, thank you for being so transparent. Let's pivot here in the, in the last couple minutes that we have. I want you both to share your biggest piece of intentional encouragement with these audience because you guys are both intentional encouragers. You ladies are fabulous encouragers. Share with the folks your biggest piece of intentional encouragement. You go, Tan. Never give up. Never, ever give up. Never give up. I, all I can say is um, once you make that decision that um, you never look back. It's an irrevocable decision and you go for it. You go for it and honor that calling. You, there is no, you are here to do something great. Honor the calling and I promise you the resources, the faith, the um, resilience, the courage, it's going to come to you. But you, ha you have to make the decision that you, that you are going for it. And once you do, all providence will move in and support you. All providence will be there. What Wonderful. You, Tam? Tam, um, yes. Yeah, I honestly believe inside us, we have all the answers. But I do believe growing up in, in our childhoods, in our experiences, are layers of shame, judgment. And if you could find the real you, that deep, that deep person in you that you've forgotten about. And whether that is through meditation, journaling, or getting a mentor, or finding through God, whatever that is, find the real you that you've forgotten. And when you find that real you, you will have that, that gift in you to come out, that value of you. You'll know more of you. And then you are able to deeply connect with others and deeply connecting with others is so important because it's the foundation of loving relationships, doing business, having everything you want in life. Everything lines up when you know you. And I mean the you, the good, the bad, and the ugly. You own all parts of that. Just be authentic you today. People just want to connect with you and you is actually the key to all the abundance that is waiting for you, your desires. And then deciding to be the real you, I promise you, everything flows because you will find out you also have divine support. And the divinity within you is supported by the divinity outside you. And that I know yeah. for sure. Very, very well said. Tanya and Tam Pluckros. Connect with them on LinkedIn. I did, and they are wonderful people to follow. Connect with them. Um, reach out. Tell them you heard them on the Intentional Encourager podcast. Ladies, this has been so good. I am so grateful for your time and joining me today on the Intentional Encourager podcast. We appreciate you so much, Brian, and everything you're doing to serve in God's God's just, he's got, he's tapped into such a divine human being to spread the world, 
to the world to the world of what it is to actually live an authentic beautiful life i am so proud of you brian i am so proud of you oh thank you so much i appreciate that and thank you for joining us on the intentional encourager podcast my thanks as always to producer Bryce Sexton and technical advisor Matt Mead. And the ultimate thanks goes to the Lord Jesus Christ who provides intentional encouragement every day for his word. And until next time, remember everyone, everywhere, at any time, and any place can be an intentional.